Welcome back to my keel project. In this episode, I'm going to show you how I've gone from this to this. So I've been sailing my 40 year old trailer sailor in and around the North Sea in some pretty heavy weather and with 40 year old keel bolts. It's got to the point where I just can't ignore them anymore. I've found that keel bolts can be a really daunting subject with plenty of expert and not so expert advice available. But I'm pretty fortunate to have a wealth of experience available to me that has helped me undertake this job. So in this video, I'll take you through how I ended up drilling and tapping new threads, the challenges I ran into and everything I learned along the way. So we managed to lift the keel up and manoeuvre it about with a winch from the rafters and normally put a timber support in to, uh, to take the weight, transfer the weight down to the floor to stop the roof from straining too much. And then we've built a frame around the keel so that it's really solid, that it's not going anywhere. The best case scenario would be that the bolts would free up, come out cleanly, and I just re-tap the holes to clean up the threads. To give it the best shot, I made little reservoirs with washers, filled them with plus gas and left them to soak for a couple of weeks, hoping it would seep in and work some magic. We then welded nuts onto the studs, which added some heat and gave them a cheeky whack with a decent sized hammer to try and break the seal. After that, we worked the nuts back and forth, hoping to free them up with an impact wrench. Unfortunately, all we achieved was snapping every single stud. The steel felt fatigued and softer than it should be. It didn't break cleanly, it just tore away. So plan A was a bit of a failure and we moved on to plan B. Drilling out the studs and cleaning up the old threads to see if they were usable. We got one hole drilled out and ran a tap through it to clean it up. But as soon as we got a look inside, it was clear the threads were black, brittle and just not worth trusting. So straight on to plan C, drilling and tapping larger holes. With the old threads no good, it was time to commit to plan C, drilling and tapping larger holes. We chipped off any loose, flaky rust and cleaned up the surface with a flappy disc. Then we welded a steel block to the top of the keel to give the mag drill a solid, flat base to magnetise to. Cast steel can be uneven and if the magnet doesn't hold properly the drill could detach. Not something I wanted happening midway through. Once the mag drill was set up and perfectly lined up with the hole we started working up through the drill sizes. We'd already gone in with a 15mm drill bit and now we stepped up to 17mm. Getting the alignment right was critical. We needed to make sure we fully removed the old threads. As we drilled, you can see the filings coming out along. That's the remains of the stud, but as we hit the bottom of the hole, the filings became finer, which told us we'd reached the cast steel of the keel itself. And because we were increasing the stud size to M22, we also needed to drill the hole deeper. The target depth was at least 1.5 to two times the stud diameter. So for a 22 millimeter stud, that meant a minimum of 44 millimetres. We added an extra 6 millimetres as a contingency in case the first few threads weren't perfect. This would ensure full thread engagement on the deeper side of things, hopefully giving me proper keel confidence. Thank you. 
There you go. That's a 19 and a half mil hole. Nice hole. Nice, no, 52 mil. There you go. Let's talk about some numbers quickly before we proceed. So if my studs were originally M18 with a thread pitch of 2.5, then that requires a hole to be drilled at 15.5 millimeters, which is called the minor diameter, 15.5 millimeters. By the time you run the tap through, the additional material that is moved will end up as an 18 millimeter hole. So if I went to M20 as my upsize, then that would require a hole to be drilled at 17.5 millimeters. And as you can see, that is not greater than the major diameter of the M18. So what I'd end up with is 0.25 of a millimeter of the stud left lining the hole. And I would be attempting to tap that with a new thread which will prob probably chew it up and create a lot of galling and I wouldn't really get a true thread. So the next best bet is M22, which requires a 19.5 millimeter hole to be drilled. And by the time that is tapped, that will end up at 22 millimeters. And as you can see, that is 1.5 millimeters greater than the major diameter of the M18, which means we will have 0.75 millimeters. We will be able to take out extra around the hole, which should take us back to really nice clean metal to be able to then run my tap in. So having spent hours and hours on the internet looking for a M22 tap set, this is the one that I found and it's a HSS tap set, which stands for High Speed Steel. 27.97, including VAT, which is really cheap actually. And um, it was the only one that I could find that was in this price range. And I was a bit skeptical as to whether it was just gonna be a pile of, uh, pile of crap, to be honest. But as you can see, the top one is a, is a tapered. Um, let me see, let's get a good picture. The top one's tapered. It's got a really decent taper on the end so you can get in the hole nice and easy and that will start your threads off and I find that if I wind that all the way down as far as it will go unwind it clean the hole and then go in with the second tap which has still got a taper but not as much as the first one that will get you down a little bit closer to the bottom of the hole and then this third tap at the bottom here is a plug tap and that doesn't have a taper and that is the one that will allow you to get all the way down to the bottom of the hole and after tapping five holes these tap sets are still really really sharp so i'm majorly impressed and i think it was like next day delivery as well so rennie tool company if you're in the uk rennie tool company is definitely worth a look And we're off. Going in first with the taper tap to start the thread off. I found it was so important to keep the, the tap in a perfect alignment as you start this off. If you start moving side to side as you're starting the tap off, then you'll just chew the first, like, I don't know, like four or five threads up. Um, and you won't get a high quality thread yield. So, I really took my time to, to start that off. As soon as I felt it get going, I gave the hole a nice clean out, got all the bits of uh, metal out, a bit more cutting fluid, and, uh, and proceeded to uh, tap the hole. This is quite a long process, so it's sped up 
for your sanity and I don't think I can show you all five holes being done. Now I've got down as far as I can go with the first tap. I've swapped it out for the second tap and that will allow me to clean the threads up a bit more and get a bit further down into the hole. I think this is a game of like slow and steady wins the race because if you overdo it you do run the risk of snapping this off in the hole and if that happens I, I just don't know what, you, what you're going to do at that point so it's definitely worth taking your time and uh, being patient with it. You can feel as you turn it, you can feel it bite and it kind of like, you can turn it as, as far as it will go and then you back it off and that cleans the threads a bit and then you can rotate it again clockwise and that will clear a little bit more out and it's just back and forth, back and forth until you get right down to the bottom. And now we are on the third and final tap which is the plug tap and that will see me all the way down to the bottom of the hole. And. Uh, I'll show you the quality of the thread that it's produced. And last but not least, this is an age old debate about what material the keel studs or bolts are made from. As a lot of people believe that stainless steel is uh, the best for keel studs going into cast steel. There's a lot of information online and what I've found is the more information you come across and read up on and the more opinions you get, you just get overwhelmed with it. And it's tough to know whether to use just mild steel, that's what was already in here and it lasted 40 years, or whether you use galvanized steel. What I've got here at the moment is just zinc plated. Now the problem is, is the zinc plating, because it's it doesn't add too much thickness to the stud, when you tap the M22 hole, the zinc plated stud will still go in because there's not too much thickness on there. If it was to be stainless steel, that would go in as well because there's no additional covering that has been added to it to make it thicker. However, galvanized adds 0 0.1 one millimeter of coating which means normally you have to over tap the hole the nuts that you get with galvanized threaded rod are tapped slightly oversized to accommodate the galvanized coating but that doesn't help me with the holes because i can't over over tap these holes because it's hard enough trying to get an m22 tap set to go in there let alone one that's gonna be tailor made to be able to over tap the hole and oversize it to be able to thread a galvanized threaded rod in there. So I'm sure this is going to spark a load of debate in the comments and obviously the problem as well is if the hole's too tight and you try and thread in a galvanized rod then it's probably going to strip the galvanized coating off which then means that you've got unprotected studding and it can also gall up and damage the threads inside the keel so it's an absolute minefield and I still although I've got these in and they look pretty good I still haven't decided what my final material of choice is going to be I really want to get galvanized in there but it's a tough one so thanks for watching this video I hope this has been helpful to you if you're looking at replacing the keel bolts on your boat Finally, I think I'm getting somewhere. And uh, yeah, I hope there's some snippets of information in here um, that can help you work out how you're gonna do your project. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.